So, uh, Bill, so for Bill's uh, return uh, appearance, uh, we screened another film uh, for him. And uh, this is an actual. I mean, I hesitate to call it a movie, but it is it is a narrative with acting and stuff. I would say it was technically more of a documentary than Dinesh's movie because I'm convinced all most of these scenes they just like put people in front of the camera and just started filming. It had sort of a a very Tay quality to it. Uh, the movie in question is called In Search of Liberty. Directed by Harmony Corinne. <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie that came out just this year. Uh, available for direct download on uh, Vimeo.com. And uh, Bill correctly uh, reminded me, I had forgotten about this, but when I told him this is a movie we were going to watch, Bill, you reminded me that this was a movie that was uh, shut down while they were filming because of union activity. And I just want to read here, it says, Tea Party activist Norm Nowitzki's In Search of Liberty a crowd-funded feature film about the U.S. Constitution has been shut down in Savannah, Georgia after 30 members of his crew walked off the job. The crew, made up of mostly students and recent graduates from the Savannah College of Art and Design, had been seeking union representation, living wages, and reclassification as employees rather than independent contractors. So, good for them. But Nothing about unions in the Constitution. No, no. And I'm surprised there actually wasn't more anti-union propaganda in the movie. But like, maybe if they had had... had extra production time be, not if, the, if they hadn't had they the strike. They would have to pay people for that kind yeah. of quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it says, the film, which stars Food Network host Bobby Dean, <laughs> son of reality star Paula Dean. Prolific N-word, you Bobby <laughs> yeah. Dean. Bills itself as a straight-to-DVD release that tells the story of a captivating statesman from America's past who takes a present-day family on a series of wild adventures that open their eyes to the Ca- origin... Cap- captivating in the sense that he kidnaps them actively. <laughs> they are like, uh, Repeatedly. He's basically, I, 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 he's basically <laughs> Vincent Gallo in Buffalo 66 <laughs> Constitution. I, I want to say that um, the star of the movie, Paul G- Dean Jr., Paul Dean Jr., <laughs> Uh, he's a type Ron of, Paul Dean. He's a type of person that my friends have coined the Golden Mongo personality <laughs> type. And the Golden Mongo is the most blessed man who walks amongst us. They dress kind of shitty. They live in a too big suburban house. They're happy all the time, but they have varying degrees of happiness. And just one new piece of information, which could be anything because they know nothing, <laughs> will change their life. And so this man, who is supposedly patriotic, being told, like, the literal articles of the Constitution that everyone learns at school, it made him, like, (laughs) rediscover his love with his wife, his better relationship with his kids than ever, and he can finally take down the Muslim Obama. Yeah. Because – this man has a childlike wonder that follows him everywhere. Yeah. Well, Amber said it's like he gets red pilled, but it's the red, white, and blue pill. Just uh, w- one more thing before we actually dive into the uh, the film itself. This is this is the uh, produced and directed by Tea Party activist uh, Norm Nowitzki. And just out of curiosity, I, I found Norm Nowitzki's uh, Twitter account, and he hasn't posted since March 2016. He's but, on the shitty media men list. <laughs> <laughs> but I've just noticed that uh, in his media grid, he has. Five different repeats of the same Bronco editorial cartoon. <laughs> We've discussed Bronco on the uh, the, yes, uh, the, the political good. cartoons episode, and the cartoon that he shared multiple times, including just in replies to Dick Morris, is oh uh, a grandson with a T-shirt that says "Next Generation," <laughs> holding hands with the grandfather, and the, the grandson. They're, they're watching fireworks, and the grandson says, "Hey, Grandpa, what are we celebrating?" And Grandpa says that we were once a free country, and he's holding a newspaper that has turned around backward, and it just says, News, Obamacare ruling. (laughs) 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 Which is, I think, a perfect segue into this movie, because this this movie is the Bronco. It it might as well have been directed by Bronco, or a political cartoonist, because everything... There is a scene early on in this movie where a guy literally looks at a newspaper, and it just says, like, Congress doing bad things. (laughs) So... The movie begin. It, 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 it follows. The movie opens. Mm-hmm. Stop eating your fucking treats. It's no. a brownie. It's really good. Yeah, you should try some. You, can't, you don't get any brownie now. <sighs> yeah, everything is. It's my my teacher said that the Constitution's stupid, <laughs> and it's just it's they posits a unified popular culture hostile to the Constitution. My teacher says the Constitution's old fashioned and needs to be replaced. 
Replaced with what? She did not say. Well, and also, like, it's so anti-public school, and you know that they're only able to get away with this level of propaganda because the people watching this are such uninvolved fathers, they have no idea what their child is learning at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, like... When conservative dads aren't going on local news pages and just finding anyone who did any crime and going, first I would cut his dick off and then I would run him over. Um, they're imagining what their kids are learning in school and getting mad about it. But never asking. Never asking. No. Just, yeah, assume, that's, yeah. that's women's work. They assume they go into class and they're like, all right, we're just going to read D-Ray's Twitter feed. And then, uh, <laughs> then, yeah. you have, then you have gym class. Open which your is Antifa learning- textbook. Yeah. <laughs> you have gym class, which is learning how to be Antifa. We have Foam statues that you can tear down. Yeah, they gym class. Not. They just mostly learn to be trans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 kid's never gonna be in the same room long enough with you to tell you that they did not replace history with gender. It it is perfect though. It is perfect that there is an entire movie made about this. And I mean, our uh, our favorite thing to do in America is to get pissed in a righteous way. And. I just want to say God bless these dads for not making the sacrifice of talking to their children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it is, it is a, as a dad, I have to say. It's far more entertaining. Yeah. As a dad, I have to say, it is a little boring at times, but we, we knew it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, children. But, it, but I do know through. that my kids, like last year, one of the things my daughter was doing, like she had a very long and kind of arduous unit on the Constitution. And like she learned a lot more than I did. And, and I was kind of like, I don't know. Where, where, this is Minnesota. Which has pretty good education in general, but this like so the whole premise of this movie was complete dog shit to me. Well, it was an arduous like lesson plan, but like all the lessons are about like how the Constitution (laughs) is bad. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. you have to know it in order to destroy it. Yeah, Yeah. this is the next step. We get Acorn to reelect Muslims (laughs) until they replace the Constitution. They spend a whole week on uh, proper burning techniques. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it's it's an article of faith uh, in this movie and with the intended audience for this film that. Um, schools don't teach about either the Constitution or the Revolutionary War or any or any the basic aspects of U.S. government. Really anything, yeah. And it's sort of like done like it. It, it follows this this normal suburban family, uh, you know, and the the dad is Paula Dean Jr. and he's got you know two kids, a boy and a girl. He's got, actually he has three kids. There's one really young kid who doesn't feature much in the movie. But anyway, they, it's they it's, keep pawning our, her off on grandma. Yeah, on hot grandma. The hot we'll grandma. We'll get, we'll get, to, later. The we'll get to the hot hubba, grandma. Hubba. That's, that's the spoiler Boing. alert. <laughs> Spring. But what's funny about the movie is that like it's it's set up like the dad knows even less about the Constitution than his kids. <laughs> yeah. The dad knows nothing. He is an absolute like, like he's not allowed to use the stove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it all begins where like you know they. They come home and like they're sitting around the table and like one of the kids says something like, "It's school today." Like our teacher said, the Constitution is stupid, and then he's like, "Really? What's the Constitution? Well, yeah, what's the Constitution?" <laughs> and he like starts scratching his head, and then like I think like he goes into the den and just Google's Constitution, <laughs> and then that night he has this like weird, scary dream. He goes to a black lodge. <laughs> they say the Constitution to him backwards. <laughs> And uh, it's sort of this weird vision of the future where, like, the National Archives are, like, overrun with ivy and the Constitution's missing. (laughs) And then he wakes up in, like, a cold sweat. And he's, oh, oh. And, like, the next morning, you know, in the breakfast nook, they're like, wow, Dad, you look like shit. What's (laughs) the matter? Lord of the Rings movies. They're seeing the fall of Middle Earth, you know. (laughs) But the the thing with this, the dad, though, is that he... um, the, the most interesting part of the movie, potentially, is him going out of his mind, like yeah. Shining style. And they oh, never absolutely. really exploit that. He just gets up the next day and goes, boy, I was kind of tired, <laughs> instead of like, I am fucking mad yeah. and foaming well, at well, the well, mouth. That, that's, why, that's why the golden Mongo, <laughs> Mongo like, has the power to bring back the Constitution, because they can have spirit journeys with yeah. Ben Franklin and like see the Constitution in their dreams and be like, yeah, I guess I have to save it. <laughs> Whereas like a normal person would be like, oh my God, I'm losing my mind. I should abandon my family because I'll end up dissolving. snapping and killing them. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas this guy's like, huh, it's like I have HBO for free when I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like that, dude. So, uh, so the dad, Paul Dean Jr., uh, is, has been disturbed by this vision and, and his oh, general... Yeah. And his general ignorance of basic American history. And he goes to the local coffee shop. And, you know, he sits down and he gets his, 
Gets his uh, his latte or whatever. Not gets, a latte, please. Okay. Coffee. Gets That's his drink. real gay. Yeah, yeah. Gets his good, yeah. normal drinker. coffee. Let me it's get also a co- like their idea of what the, the coffee house inhabitants are is like this laptop bubba who's for some reason oh, yeah, in every scene. Oh, yeah, there's this weird, chubby, yeah. bearded guy. I like to think that it's not turned every- on. Yeah, they can't process- He's just on disability. <laughs> yeah. It's Eric like, Garland. Hey, Let's just yeah. call it. It's Eric Garland. <laughs> <laughs> they can't prosecute me for what I download if it's the coffee shops I pee at. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the Constitution. Yeah, no, the, the other guy in the coffee shop is just there because he tells his family he goes to work during the day, but just... <laughs> yes, yeah, like the film's time out. Um, so, Let me get a coffee with uh, extra water. I don't want it to be gay and European style. <laughs> But like, uh, so he sits no down. No soy in this, is there? <laughs> yeah. Can I get extra testosterone in here? He sits down and he gets the local paper, and that's when he sees a headline that's like "Congress to ban the Constitution," <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. and he's like, "Oh!" <laughs> and then he, he looks at it and sits down for like half a second, looks at the paper, and then looks up, and he's staring right across the table from an elderly man who's dressed like a typical suburban dad, in that he's got like. You know, some, in a, some blousey Dockers yeah. button-up shirt, <laughs> like <laughs> tucked, into his, tucked into his flat front khakis. Yeah, exactly. With glasses. Except he has wavy gravy hair. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a retired art teacher who still sells weed on the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now absolutely. You and I, the audience, know you know immediately, or I guess you pick up, you know, that this is Ben Franklin. BF baby. This is this is BF. This is the Ben BFG. Franklin. Has come. <laughs> Like through Ben Franklin, gangster. <laughs> through the the dream logic of this movie, Ben Franklin has left the Black Lodge through you know an electrical outlet or something, and then very very similar to actually to uh, Kyle McLaughlin, and uh, is now haunting this coffee shop, and is now appearing to Paula Dean Jr. Uh, as sort of a physical manifestation yes. of his schizophrenic brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, he has, but his performance in all of this is like so. Earnest, like it's very. I, I he like it, the Paula Dean Jr. is such a special little boy, and you know he's literal. Uh, only like credit beforehand. I think it's just being on his mom's yeah, show. Yeah. Mom's so show. So his resume and he's is just 40, like my like... mom says the N word, and they're like, "You're hired." <laughs> Yeah, he's the perfect man. He's like he's cool. He, he has a simple mind. He's guileless <laughs> yeah. the entire time. He gets away with saying the com- N word. He looks comes like out he, very like Andy Griffith. He looks yeah. like he really has to concentrate to just stroll across a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah full, which, full which full coincidentally control. there are several sequences of that. In oh this yes. movie. It's yes. quite a bit. A- every yeah, time he kind of looks like he got really badly dosed with acid and he's trying to keep it together. <laughs> right. And all the time it's like they don't know i'm high they don't know i'm high they don't know i'm high he acts the same as me whenever i'm on video I'm like, oh a normal person would uh you know probably do something with their hands and, uh, <laughs> this is I'd how i stand. one eye open yeah you know just have a slight smirk on my face but like not a smug one just a bewildered one to let people know that i'm cheerful but i don't know anything so they don't think i'm better than yeah them. he spends a lot of time staring off into the middle distance at like the key grip or yeah something. it's like it's like when he's not in use he's in power safety <laughs> <laughs> so um so so he sits down you know and like i said th- th- if you were to just take this literally he's sitting at a coffee shop and then some weird old man just sits down next to him starts staring at him intensely and talking to him about the constitution he goes along with it just effortlessly weird old man with like long creepy hair and he's not immediately alarmed and like fearful that he's being cruised which is the most unrealistic part of this whole movie well, there's a lot of, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can read the, the Ben Franklin character's behavior. Um, cruising is one of them. Or, Especially since the, the, the actor exudes pure sex. He's a yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I was getting a little hot and bothered. They're trying, obviously, to evoke the history, which is that Franklin was a horny toad. But, man, it comes across as, as like an unhealthy sexuality. You say horny toad, I say fuck beast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I like about, about the, the, the first meeting between Ben and the dad is that uh, ben, ben, ben begins to explain to him what the Constitution is, you know, as a 40-plus something <laughs> yeah. man. Just he's like, huh? Whoa. And the way he does it is 
he asked him if like he's ever played any games, and he's like, "Yeah, I played a little football, you know." And he's like, "Now in football, that, oh, that's the other thing. They made Ben Franklin sort of talk like a Foghorn Leghorn character, yeah. Even though he was he from sounds, New England. Sounds like the Mason Dixon Ben Franklin. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, the, now, the, now, I, I say now, I say now, in this in this game of football, son, son, are there are there rules that you abide by? I'm a simple Philadelphia lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he's like, well, yeah, every game needs rules." And he goes like, "Well, give me an example of the, one of the rules." And uh, no the- kneeling on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, no dancing with hip hop and celebration. <laughs> and and he says, uh, "Well, you know, like uh, players' feet have to like both feet need to be planted in bounds for a catch to be." Uh, ruled complete. The cheerleader's feet also need to be visible. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben Franklin goes, are you telling me even if the one foot is just a teeny bit out of bounds, that that still doesn't count? And he goes, nope. Those are the rules. And he's oh, like, sure. <laughs> and he goes, okay, there you go. Now, now he's got him. He's like, because the Constitution is exactly the same to the NFL rule book. Yeah. And it provides the very strict, easy to, un- like, Easy to understand and interpret rules as a game, right? So it's all there written down just like the rules to Monopoly, football. Very precise. Yeah, exactly. And that it's just a matter of following the rules. So from there, uh, he leaves the coffee shop, like, or Ben Franklin disappears, just vanishes in front of him. And then he walks out to the parking lot to get his car, and Ben Franklin reappears again, but riding a Segway. <laughs> With a, with a little uh, guitar lick behind him. Yeah. Because he's a cool dad, get yeah. Ben Franklin. And uh, from there on, he begins to see Ben Franklin everywhere. Like in, ref- in window reflections, in... Uh, in the yeah. backs of photographs. In yeah. his toilet. He's like Pennywise from It, just stalking him. So this guy... Uh, is having a mental breakdown, talking to imaginary characters, but... Is and, and crucially point this out, when he tries to get confirmation by pointing to po- photographs that he saw Ben Franklin in or the weird uh, uh, newspaper that said the Constitution was banned, when he shows it to him, they're gone. Right. Yeah. And I'd like, so his wife is terrified. Yeah, she thinks he's yeah. losing it. Gaslighted by a founding father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so fucked up. But... As part of his ongoing mental breakdown, he is really interested in the Constitution, and he's really interested in teaching his family about the Constitution and having them go on this this learning adventure with him. And then he is shepherded by Ben Franklin, by this maybe imaginary, maybe not sort of apparition who begins haunting him and then eventually his family to teach them about the Constitution. And it begins with, uh, after day two... Oh, I, I, or so like uh, he meets Ben Franklin in the coffee shop. He goes home and he's like, "Wow, honey, have you ever read the Constitution?" She's like, "I don't know." Maybe. She's like, "What do you do for work? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go all day?" Yeah. Well, actually, well, I, fo- I found a really big penny. <laughs> I think it's bigger than the other ones. I'm not sure. Actually, his job is that he is a freelance photographer whose work only appears in the local newspaper. His wife seemingly doesn't work. They have three kids. No, she wrote for the newspaper. Oh, she writes for the yeah. newspaper. You're right. All right. extremely it, lucrative things in small towns. Yeah. Right, because they, they showed her doing layout on the computer in what looks to be like MS Paint. Yeah, <laughs> she uses video toaster. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, honey... I can't sleep. And he gets up, you know, he stays up super late. It's like 11 o'clock and his eyes are bolted <laughs> open after going to bed three hours earlier. Um, uh, freedom being lost. <laughs> his eyes bolt open and he goes to the den again and, and just looks up the Constitution and reads it. And he gets back to sleep like a baby. And he wakes up the next day sort of renewed spiritually, emotionally, but still having an ongoing mental breakdown because the Ben Franklin character continues to plague his waking hours. Meets him again in the coffee shop, popular cruising spot for weird old men. Then Ben Franklin invites him into his sort of midlife crisis suburban cool dad sports car. Hop to, man. Time's a-wasting. Where are we going? We're going to have some fun. What the heck is it about the Constitution? Now, let's just chew on that for a while. And enjoy the scenery. So he gets into his good American middle-aged dad, midlife crisis sports car. And he's like, cop on in. I want to show you something. And he's like, sure, man, I met yesterday who may or may not be real. I feel like Joan Didion in this car. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we're we're gonna film a dash cam video. <laughs> so he, he gets in Brent Franklin's sports car, and they start cruising down the highway, weaving in and out of traffic. And he's like, starts explaining to him about you know uh, how the Constitution works and why it's important. And then just out of nowhere, there you go. Ew, ew, the big government, John Q. Law, sees them speeding mm-hmm. yeah. on a highway. Sir, can I see your Quran? <laughs> you present the prayer mat that you have to drive with at all times. Just checking to see if it's a woman driver <laughs> being unescorted by a male relative. Well, I called it, too. Relative. I was like, uh, watch him do a, you know, these are not the droids you're looking for. Because Am- people who make movies like these have only seen five movies. Right. Amber called it perfectly. Ben Franklin gets pulled over by the cop, and he's like, you were speeding. You are going 90 miles an hour in a school zone. And he might as well have said speed limits aren't in the Constitution. But Amber was exactly right. He does the Obi-Wan hand wave on the cop and just says, you're doing a great <laughs> job, officer. And then he's like, oh, oh okay. But the implied boy, because it was a black cop. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. It's a silent boy. Yeah. You, you, you got to hear it. <laughs> By not here. It's yeah. like jazz. It's yeah. like jazz of racism. Because he was a framer of the Constitution. He's like, what if you could only give me 60% of a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so he uh, uses uh, Jedi um, uh, founding father mind magic, <laughs> mind's founding father mindset to get out of a speeding ticket, and then uh, drives Paula Dean Jr. through a time tunnel. It's, yes. like, it's like Donnie Darko, basically. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he drives. He dri- they drive through a time tunnel, and he says... I mean, it's like very Oedipal, though. He has this new father figure. They're going through a You're right. tunnel together. Right. And they go out on Runnymede. They're, they're rebirthed in... in, in mag- when the Magna Carta was signed, but you might think, oh, cool, they're going to go back, and they're going to witness the Magna Carta being signed. Yeah, just a no. meadow. It's <laughs> yes. very, very expensive to build old-timey sets and costumes for a bunch of actors to play King John and, and the Barons. Instead, we're going to have them stand in a field, which is free, and look into the sky as a PowerPoint presentation is played on the clouds. Which makes you think they could have done this in this guy's house. They didn't need to go to the, they didn't need to break the laws of time and physics <laughs> to go to a field to show a PowerPoint presentation. Well, and I'm not sure exactly like how you can make a high production value uh, you know, slideshow, but I feel like these were not the best slideshows. No, they were all terrible. They were all uh public public domain images. Yeah, they're clip so. clip art clip stuff art projected AF. on the clouds. Yeah. But the, uh, the, the purpose of this time travel excursion to just a meadow, it was a very medieval-looking meadow, though. That's the <laughs> yeah, we were, we were saying they went to the movie field in England. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, those, you have to eat these mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the movie is just them going back to the 1500s getting murdered by Cromwell loyalists. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the wife being like, what happened to my husband with the 68 IQ? <laughs> uh, ma'am, uh, we're the, we're the uh, FBI. We have reason to believe that your husband Tom traveled with a pervert and was killed there. <laughs> <laughs> he was boiled oh. in lard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was always doing really stupid things. But as as part of the PowerPoint presentation, they go back to the field in England. Uh, that ben Wheatley made his movie and the Magna Carta was signed. But in the clouds, he shows him a clip art of ancient Greece, and like this is the uh, the Tea Party thing where they're like. Uh, you know, every, it, it goes ancient Greece, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, Steve Bannon just did this because he's fascinated by Edward it's Gibbons' the book. Western tradition, right? That, right, know, goes back to the dawn of monotheism and before. It's, they've seen five movies and they've read two books. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, the Founding Fathers were huge Roman Empire fetishists. They were. Yeah, they definitely were. That's well, why we I have mean, a Senate. Uh, a, yeah, a. a a, it's also where they all, a all the slave based in DC economy. Looks like <laughs> yeah. Shit. yeah, and and one of the funniest things is when they're they're bringing up, uh, you know, classical fifth century Athens is like the perfect democratic society. <laughs> Uh, they, they, again, there was one of the many omissions in this movie is, is that uh, they were like, this was the first time when truly free people could come together and form a free government by and of the people. Yeah, huge asterisks there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it wasn't called pedophilia. It was a febophilia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, slavery gets no mention. Zero. None. None. Not slavery, all. Not even American slavery. Yeah, well, yeah. I was originally thinking, oh, they're going to do the, the just the Bill of Rights and not do the whole amendments. They didn't even do the whole Bill of Rights. They, no. they the only do the first four. four. I mean, because theoretically, if you are like a constitutionalist, which you shouldn't be anyway because it's a nerdy bitch thing to be, 
you could say, well, this document guarantees freedoms and that, you know, it provides the, the precedent for uh, slavery abolition, which is like a decent enough uh, kind of weird revisionist history bullshit thing that a lot of conservatives use. They just decided to gloss over that yeah, part. No mention whatsoever. They didn't even hand wave that. And I thought they would at least do the. Yeah, but we got over that. And, yeah, you know, yeah. There was nope. there were a few kinks in the beginning, yeah. like something, but it never happened. <laughs> nope. So uh, they then go through the t- they they leave the field in England and they go through the time tunnel, but this is just like a, a space tunnel now, and they go from whatever part of Georgia the movie was filmed in to Philadelphia to see the place where the Constitution was written, and and go up the rocky steps just like everyone. yeah, that's the best part is that so they finally get okay now we're going to get to the part where we talk about this document because remember the whole premise of this is that if people just read the constitution they would see it's black and white intent and realize that we are right in it's, wanting it's, a minarchist yeah. libertarian world it's the, it's the playbook it's got all the rules yeah and then they start reading what's actually in the constitution and every fucking noun is insanely vague <laughs> right and 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 just instantly your head is like, well, what the fuck does this mean? There's like five different things that these words could mean: domestic tranquility, general welfare. Like these I mean, are all incredibly that vague set phrases. The precedent for like, a, like American vagueness of language used in like the private sector. So like synergy, vertical integration. Yeah. Like a lot of just vague language that can be interpreted in any way and that you can use very insidiously. Yeah. So as soon as they actually do start reciting the actual words in the Constitution, they invalidate their whole premise because you instantly think. Oh, this is incredibly contested. None of these can be stable. Uh, m- important thing is that there is none of these are words that you could get everybody together and be confident they're all going to get the same definition of them. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, if they were using the NFL analogy, honestly, it would be a bunch of guys get together on grass and throw something at each other like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with random capitalizations. Of yeah, now. you got to get the guy to you got to get the guy down for him yeah. to be no longer have the ball. Well, what do you mean by down? Just down. The he object. Of the game is to win the game and not to lose the yeah, game. Yeah, it's like yeah. well, two le- two two legs. Do they both have to be down? Both knees, one knee, that, just down. And then as soon as that happens, let's start arguing about it. And then oh, some segments of the population have incredibly vested interest in certain of these words having a very narrow or broad definition. That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, after his trip through time and space, our beautiful golden Mongo again questions <laughs> questions none of it, and it's just like honey. The strangest thing happened to me. Yeah. I'm time traveled, and I went, man gave me a power board demonstration. I went to the 13th century to see a, a stack. I also love the fact that they have the power to, you know, Doctor Who it through time and space. First, they go to Runnymede in England in a blank field to learn about. Athens, yeah, <laughs> which is confusing in itself. And then when they go back through the time tunnel, they're just like in modern Philadelphia. So you need the same magic for both. That's and then they're in a green screened, like in front of Independence Hall. <laughs> yeah. like well, that, that's what's great about it is it's like if your any of your grandparents got the power to tr- time and space travel. It would be just like their stories. Like you think they're taking you to the place you're supposed to go to learn about the thing you're supposed to do, but it's just rambling bullshit, right. and every, everything's mismatched. They're yeah. like, you're like, why did you take me to the Peloponnesian War and tell me about when they put nitrates in hot dogs in the, 19, <laughs> in the 1920s? And what the always, fuck are you talking about? And it always ends with anyway, she died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you wait? Why are we three thousand years in the future, and you're telling me about the Murphy Brown abortion episode? What <laughs> the fuck? But uh, Bill, to your point about like the fact that they he, they have he has a time time machine Corvette, but to teach this guy about this dullard about the Constitution, he doesn't take him to the actual like writing of the Constitution. At, to Matt's point, that just the, the costume budget right, would right. have been too much. No. So yeah, it's a crowd funded movie. Yeah. Um, so uh, now, like th- this is the point in the movie where he's like, "Wow!" to his wife. Some th- this is some weird things are happening when I think about the Constitution, and she's I smell pennies all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, and, he, and he never like says, "I went through fucking time and space." He <laughs> says, "I learned about the Third Amendment, honey." <laughs> oh my! Wait, holy shit! I unlocked the key to this movie, oh. like I do with every movie. What's the first thing him and Ben Franklin really talk about? It's football. What? Happens to you in football? You get tackled. CTE. Concussion. <laughs> oh, this guy has had. He's basically like his wife just sort of 
she set up an electric fence around the town so he can't wander out that much. <laughs> and he has hallucinations where he meets people from history, but they are just look like his friends in town. And he travels through time. And everyone in the town has to humor him in like a Truman Show-esque fashion because he was the football hero. But to acknowledge that he ruined his brain, winning state would destroy the town's football program. Jesus, so this movie's actually very That's subversive. a really good movie. That's, you got to pitch that, man. Yeah. That's why I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> so the midway point of the movie is when uh, Golden Mongo's delusion becomes a shared one because Ben Franklin starts basically doing a home invasion. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he just starts knocking on the door. And I, like, I said when we were watching it, it's basically like funny games. Except no, I said that. I said it before you. No way. Oh, I did. I think Run did. the tape back. I, I think I, Amber you said, said funny it games. I, I described Wait. the plot of funny games. What? Yes. That is the most mansplainy fucking no, he thing. Did. I did. I heard it. Okay, but still, what, you, what did you just say? You said it, and then I explained the plot. No, no, I no, explained no, no, the. No, no, I referenced the plot said, of funny games. You made an oblique reference, first. saying, "Oh, oh they're okay. going to wear gloves and ask for an egg," and then oh, you I said it explicitly. Part. All right, well, that's fair. Well, while you guys, fair. while you guys are making, funny yo, yo, <laughs> flag on the play, <laughs> mansplaining movie references. <laughs> while you guys get out were, the constitution. Well, you <laughs> your description of the thing was, well, you said it, but then I explained it. Well, it's the other way around. So I think, so Ben Franklin starts coming into their home. And, and then he, oh wait, they're having a family meeting because right. the dad is concerned that he, they need to start talking about the Constitution. And it never ends. It's like the long march. The middle section in the It's like movie, a Maoist self-criticism is, section. There's a lot of really riveting action of, of them going in between the dining room and, and the living room. Yeah. They, he knocks on the door, just invites himself into their family home, and then immediately sits in the dad's chair at the family table. Cucks the hell out And of just him. cucks him immediately. Yeah. And that's the story from there on in. It's a story of one man's encuckening. By <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like a lot of weird sexual and familial dynamics. There's like, there's like the father figure one. There's like the cuck one. There's the buddy cop one. Because at some point, the, the dad becomes very smug and shitty towards the rest of the family for not knowing about the Constitution. Yeah, right. he's like, he's like you, you, you guys are telling me you're ignorant of the thing I learned about yesterday? <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's a perfect Twitter guy. Yeah, yeah, and he's five times their age, and he's like, you fucking morons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Nazi mentioned the really tasty uh, dynamic later on where uh, the mom's mother, so the kid's grandmother, who's, who's kind yes. of a, you know, a hotsy totsy like attractive yeah. grandma... Ben Franklin totally nails her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is. Right. He's, he's like texting her. Yeah, he is. He literally texts the grandma. Yes. And it shows them. Call me, baby. Making a rendezvous to be together later. He said, well, you're trying to get the pipe. One of, yeah. uh, she's one of his best customers. Or, or he's one of her best customers because she owns the local bookstore. Yes. And, you know, he, he just, just hangs out in. Which is a major plot point in the movie, yeah. too, that a bookstore is opening Yeah, they town. took a lot of time out for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was a news report about the bookstore opening. They were like, a bookstore is opening in town. That was The Intercept. That was a story that Glenn Greenwald has been working on for three years. A bookstore. A suburb in Georgia. just sells the Constitution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Glenn. And Bill O'Reilly's killing Japan. Yeah. Glenn, Glenn and Jeremy are there, and they're like, who funds you? And Ben Franklin pulls up in his Segway. <laughs> He's like, the Constitution funds us. Yeah. We the people fund us. Yeah. Um, so then... Ben Franklin interrupts their family meeting, inserts himself into it, then doesn't leave. Yeah. Then the husband and wife go to sleep again. And uh, I think the wife is like, who's the strange man in our house? <laughs> Why is he distressed. between us yeah. in bed? <laughs> yeah. Then they go to sleep and then they wake up and he's still in the house making their kids breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like none of this is ever like common. The kids upon. call him dad now for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And mom. So uh, then he wants to just keep teaching the family about the Constitution. So he brings all of them. He trades in this time-traveling Corvette for just a giant RV. Yeah. And he takes the whole family on like a, a sort of weekend road trip to learn about the Bill of Rights. Yeah. And the first thing they teach about the, is that they just drive past a bunch of churches to learn about uh, freedom of religion. You've been to church, have you? Yep. First Amendment's alive and well. And explain that uh, the phrase separation of church and state is not in the Constitution. Oh, and this is, we forgot about this. There's a running subplot that there was a Constitution Day 
party oh, right. Right. that was overseen by the mayor, and he was, he was inaugurating a week of of, uh, of celebrations of the Constitution in the town, and these tiny Antifa teenagers mm-hmm. start yelling. Played by 35 years. Yeah, yes. It's, it's we like, want to graduate! Yeah, it's like the new kids on the block, basically. <laughs> and they're yelling, The Constitution is a crime! What's it ever done for us? We the people! We the people! Well, where's the thing of the Constitution about free about my free food? I'm and tired of retaking trigonometry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like school should be illegal. Uh, I burn down the bar- gay. Burn down the barber shop. <laughs> yeah, you know, no. and they're like oh, traditional values are lame. No, and they literally bum rush the stage of the mayor yep. and tear down the banner that says "We the People" the Constitution yep. and like rip it in yep. half. And they're like, we- and everybody flees like you know yeah, Bosnian terrorists. <laughs> Invaded the space. Yeah, and then, oh, yeah, these three hundred pound guys are terrifying an entire crowd while they're yelling. Free food stamps should replace the Constitution. It rules. But so, and then it watched. It, well, he's explaining the First Amendment to the kids in the in the van. The the girl is like, they should have redressed things peacefully. They have a First Amendment right to peaceful assembly and expression, but they didn't, and they did violence, and so they're bad. And then they drive by. A pro America protest where people are holding signs like, you know, lower taxes. It's and, against, you know, yeah, America is good. Panels. Exactly. And they're like, this is how you do it. That is good patriotic. It basically says march in a perfect a tiny circle. circle. <laughs> <laughs> six guys marching in a tiny circle. I think there was like six guys marching in a tiny circle outside the Department of Labor, and they just all had signs that said jobs. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and that was contrasted with the anti fox. No Sharia law. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So they were like, this is how you do it, according to the First Amendment. And then the the kids are truly smug little shits. Oh, they're awful. They're just smirking the entire time. People who broke up the mayor's event, if they had a grievance, they should have petitioned the government, not torn the place apart. Son, you are well on your way to becoming a constitutional scholar. I don't know if you caught this, but there was one moment where... um, Somebody said, "Well, why didn't the mayor do anything? Why did did you, did you catch that?" And the no. mayor is black, yeah, right. in this. And basically, they say, "Why didn't they? Why didn't they shut down those anti fa guys?" Mm. And the dad's like, "Go, I don't know. I guess it's just you know." Uh, there's a little wink there. Yep. So he's a Democrat, son. <laughs> he's a. De- he's one of those inner city. He's got a sanctuary son. city. Yeah, he's that's from the, Chicago. That's the grown up version of Levon from True Allegiance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, oh, and I also like when they're doing the tour of freedom of religion, they go by churches, and it's like sort of the implication is like you have the freedom to be a Presbyterian, a Methodist, an Episcopalian. Yeah, but and then, then they, they, yeah. And then they pass a single Jewish guy, like a rabbi with like pass and a hat walking down the street, and they're like, or miscellaneous. <laughs> <laughs> the guy is singing tradition. tradition. <laughs> it, it, what's great about it is they're doing the opposite of the mitzvah van. It's a bunch right. of Gentiles in an RV yeah. going, are you Jewish? Well, carry on. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically the, the way you pronounce it is, is Judeo-Christian. Right? <laughs> it's got to go up on the end. And then uh, the girl, uh, they clear up that, uh, you know, that, that Congress shall make no law respecting yes. the establishment of religion doesn't mean that religion can't interfere with yeah. public life. You should be able to pray in school. All, and that's all clearly in the Constitution. Right. So not debatable. And that, and that it, your, your school can't make you take off a crucifix shirt because yep. that's freedom of speech. And by the way, public schools, let kids wear the crucifix T-shirt. Yeah, who cares? Let, let them wear the pentagram T-shirt. That's even cooler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then I mean, they move on to the Fourth Amendment, which is uh, unjust search and seizure. And they go to their... their unjust m- seizure. They go to Kurt Eichenwald's house. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, they go, they this go is Kurt Hakenwald's wife <laughs> calling your movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, they go to their their bedroom, and there's two FBI agents like rifling through their stuff, you know. And and look, so the FBI agents pull the guns out on the family and Ben Franklin, and Ben Franklin literally laughs in their faces and is like, what is that, a SIG-29, you pussy? Like, that's not a real gun. And then disarms both of them using Seagal gun style. kata. Steven Seagal, the yeah. fat guy Aikido move. Yeah. 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 He uses gun kata to disarm both of the FBI agents. 
and then humiliates them by giving them uh, two playing cards to hold on their chest. <laughs> and then he's like, don't look until you're out of the house. And then they look and it's a joker. That was a that was a long bit that did not really pay off. Yeah. yeah. And so. also it looked very weird and we couldn't figure out what was going on with yeah. the card. Yeah. And- they just looked very like incensed, like they had the vapors. Yeah, yeah. They were there to be basically tormented. There's a scene where they have them sit down at this table and they condescendingly explain the Fourth Amendment to them. The kids but with do. A re- the kids yeah, with a real edge them. to their voice. Like they're going to start torturing them at any moment. Yeah, and these and these feds look like Mormon bike missionaries. <laughs> yeah. But in real life, these would be like guys who look like thumbs with big guts and chiseled <laughs> arms and Punisher right. t-shirts and the moment you were like sir the fourth of they would have immediately shot your dog and yeah. <laughs> fucking put a battering ram through your fish tank <laughs> yeah, yeah. for no reason would have fragged your children yeah no yeah these these guys look like they were you know vegans from birth and yeah. uh, <laughs> which really makes me wonder do you need all those guns to defend against this federal government these guys look like they haven't eaten in a week You're the yeah. biggest pussies in the world uh Every in real life, every Fed like wears like a kafaya, like they're deployed in a desert environment, which is fucking hilarious because they're just going to suburbs to evict eight year olds and deport them. <laughs> they're the biggest. They're also huge fucking pussies, but like just vicious, tyrannical, jackbooted thugs. But, but, they're, they're but when they sit pussies. these guys down yeah. at the table with the family and the kids explain the Constitution and they basically go, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, love I made it. a big mistake. <laughs> Again, it's like the gap between like the fact that these people think the Constitution is just like if people read it, they would believe identical to they do. But like just knowing it would protect you from something like an FBI raid yeah. on your house. I, yeah. just well, explain it's to it's them. evangelical logic. It's like, no, 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 just read it. Like, you're yeah. going to be like, oh. Yeah, Which let's tell somebody, response let's tell somebody who's raising a baby who has a permanent uh, a gas canister dent in their forehead from a police raid about how they could have warded them off by reciting the Fourth Amendment. When I was like, when I was like, um, yeah, 16, uh, my friends were like, you know, like teenage weed dealers. And I remember I had watched. I'm just a teenage weed dealer. Yeah. And I remember I watched, you know, like on one of the dumb forums I was on, there was one of those videos where it's like, here's a lawyer telling you how to stop the cops if they pull you over, <laughs> where it's all stuff like, am I being detained, sir? Uh, you don't have a warrant, blah, blah, blah. And I remember telling them to this and thinking it would prevent them from ever being fucked with by the Chicago Police Department. And they were like, what? You fucking idiot. Yeah. They'll just do whatever to us. And I was like, ah, oh, they're so stupid. They don't know about the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, when I, like, inter- saw cops in action more, I was like, oh, yeah, no, that literally doesn't matter. They'll just yeah. be racist. You have a move. flashlight up your ass by yeah. the time you got the second yeah. sentence out. Uh, well, the movie is very concerned about a police state. You know, yeah. they think yeah. the, con- the Constitution is very. They worried that anti- Mumford and Son is going to come into your house. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, they get they get lessons about the you know up to the Fourth Amendment. Uh, they got lessons about. Then they how, get bored and then they get it. bored. And Ben Franklin is like, "Yo, I'm I've just got to go smash your grandma real quick. Hold on, let me just uh, I got to text yo ma, ma's on the line right now. <laughs> I'm gonna text her an egg plant emoji. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, so then they go away, and then like the wife goes to there's there a really funny scene where like the wife goes to her job at the local newspaper, you know, imbued with this new love of liberty and and knowledge of basic American history. And writes like an op-ed editorial, like front page op-ed, front page right. op-ed. No more quartering the, of red coats in our <laughs> yeah. South above, Carolina town. Above the fold, like the Constitution is good, is swell. And then out of nowhere, like her. And then the, the other, the, the other one, the other headline is slow news day. <laughs> And then out of nowhere, she's like, like Ember said, she's doing newspaper layout in MS Paint. <laughs> and out of nowhere, her coworker tr- swivels around and she's like, only in America could you write article about how constitution is good. <laughs> yeah. I come from socialist country where there is no freedom of press. Yeah. They, they arrested my family just for working with the Wehrmacht. <laughs> <laughs> we used to my have family- many palaces. Government take them away. They took our the- sugar cane plantation <laughs> in Argent Venezuela, Mexico. <laughs> so yeah, it was a very Dr. Nick accent. My father, yeah. <laughs> my father was an Alpha <laughs> 66. <laughs> Socialism took away all our hard-earned slaves. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so the, the wife publishes the op-ed, Constitution Good. <laughs> and then that night, 
Antifa, <laughs> Antifa, pull, pull, Antifa pulls up to pull up skirt, skirt. He, he pulls up to the local newspaper office in like a a, a Ford Taurus, yep. and then just throws a brick through yep. the window, yep. and then runs away. Do you think that Ford, like Ford Motor Company, like someone, like someone saw this and like. Oh guys, we gotta file an injunction. This is really making us <laughs> the, look bad. The official like, vehicle also, of I love Antifa. the idea yeah. that like their number one target would be the Fartsville Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just say the Constitution's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for some reason, Ben Franklin tasks the eleven-year-old boy with booking a music act for the yeah. Constitution right. Day yes. celebration. Oh, and the daughter has to find out why her teacher thinks. The Constitution blows. Yes. Oh, and then she comes back, and the answer is that the teacher didn't really know why. She just said it was something she learned in college. Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, classic college. I still don't understand why though, that was put on that little kid. Like Ben Franklin was looking at like a ten year old. Like I see a young Kim Fowley in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kid books death grips. <laughs> <laughs> no, backs, it was. I believe. Like, I think it was screwdriver. Screwdriver. If I remember. Screwdriver. Johnny Rebel. Yeah. Uh, and ho- and Hobson, <laughs> three bands that go together. But I guess sort of the the climax of the movie is that there's no conflict well, at all. Well, yeah, which there's is really no conflict. Weird. It's weird. Like there's yeah, there's no bad guy. They have this sort of faceless antifa that's hostile to the constitution with the brick and the protesters. But it never gets it never gets a, like a bad guy who's leading it all. There's never a confrontation. No. They never beat him. They just find out about the constitution, realize it's great, and then they say, "Hey, let's have a concert about the constitution." And so they get Jason this Aldean band. Is yeah. They get this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Like, he kind of looked like that. Yeah. This so, band called Madison Rising, which is a notorious right wing butt rock band. <laughs> well, no. Before they get to the Madison Rising concert, I guess like the closest thing to a climax of the movie is when after Ben Franklin, it's Ben was, Franklin and the grandma. <laughs> yeah, hey, after, yeah. After, yeah, after yeah. Ben got done smashing their grandmother. <laughs> Like blatantly and in front of all of them, pretty yeah. much. It gets uh, it gets really NC seventeen. He, he, he there takes for a while. he takes the family, uh, packs him in the RV again, and takes him to the county fair where he uh, he's like, "There's just one last thing I got to show oh, you." Oh yeah, yeah, and he's like, "You know, the, the, I told oh, you about God. the Constitution and like how our government's supposed to be. Oh. And, like, <laughs> you need to see what Washington D.C. is really like." And he he makes them go on like the old spook house, like the haunted house ride at uh, the shitty sort of county uh, uh, affairs. Yeah. So, like, they get in there, and it's, like, flashing, like, you know, ghoul, ghoul faces. And then, like, I swear to God, there was a couple... They keep cutting back to, like, a a witch character in the haunted house and then just playing audio of Nancy Pelosi over it. Yeah. Welcome to your government in Washington, D.C. We have to pass the bill so that you can... Find out what is in it. What's the difference between people who enter the country legally and those who speak in? Washington doesn't care. The government will take care of everyone out of your pocket. I apologize for Mr. Monster Voice and the horrible news. We are not just going to be waiting for legislation. I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Who needs Congress anyway? But the main villain of the haunted house. It's our boy. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the Obama. Yeah. It's our boy. Yeah. Hello, the I'm uh, a Muslim. Uh, yeah, as a pirate. As a pirate. The yeah. Arg, Arg. Uh, I'm going to board your vessel. As a Somalian pirate, and, uh, I'm just saying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to eat your dogs. Uh, 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 your har har and a uh, bottle of non-alcoholic rum. <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> um, if you like your booty, you can keep it. So. <laughs> well, oh, I'm a pirate. I think we should have a beer summit. Is called the rum? <laughs> <laughs> Because there should be. Yeah, it would, just not- be like, it would just be like spicy Hawaiian punch. That would be <laughs> delightful. It's funny that they, the, the Obama stand in was the pirate. A big, big one of the five historical facts that uh, like Tea Party Constitution people know yes, is, the bar- baby. is the Barbary pirate the first Let war, mark, baby. And that they think yes. that is the, the the basically the constitutional justification or like the American constitutional and historical justification for the war on terror was Thomas Jefferson and the Barbary pirates uh, war on the Barbary pirates yes, in North Africa. That's yeah. true. That was the first war really that we did, and it's like, see, we've been at war with these motherfuckers ever yep. since. Even though, of course. The the uh, John Adams wrote to them and literally said, "We have no quarrel with your religion. We have no problem with the Mohammedans." <laughs> yeah, Barack Obama was descended from John Adams. That's John actually Adams true. That's traded, not a joke. Traded, He's related yeah. to him. John Adams was like, "Let me be clear. I practice your religion." <laughs> 
And uh, the Alien and Sedition acts are actually good. Uh, if I had a great, 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 great grandson, it would look like Barack Obama, <laughs> <laughs> who will be president one day. Uh, hopefully, after we've uh, created uh, fifty-seven states. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Obama. Right after Obama got inaugurated, he opened a portal in the Oval Office and was like. Uh, one day I will complete your vision. Only seven to go. <laughs> <laughs> the vision that started in that field in England <laughs> yeah. all those many years yeah. ago <laughs> when we were watching Greeks in the sky. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget when I was a young boy in Indonesia and we'd do PowerPoints <laughs> <laughs> against the clouds themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, they, they go to the haunted house and like they get out and the dads they were like wow like th- that was scary or something and then the dad's like yeah but we needed that <laughs> and he was like now I know what it's like to be complacent when there are really bad things out there yeah. so and then like I, I guess the end of the movie the end of the movie is just is they just have oh a concert. let's have we're gonna fix all of this the fact that we live in this jackbooted hell where all of these liberals have perverted the concert no they, they go to my favorite plot device ever what I call the Deus Ex Mickey Rooney. <laughs> where they they're like we're just gonna fix it all with the show. They do. Yeah. <laughs> they do. They get it's this my awful... favorite way for a movie to go. It never <laughs> happens in real life, the, unfortunately. This this like this fucking reactionary creed. This like this fucking uh, like. Alt right Nickelback, yeah. <laughs> Madison Rises plays this awful fucking song. Called, like, we need a hero. We need oh. a hero. <laughs> yeah, Officer Darren Wilson had no choice. <laughs> oh my god! No, in, in the the sort of picnic concert scene, yeah. like half of the people were in Cardinals. <laughs> of the Cardinals they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You got to pick up on these little these little codes, yeah. you know, Cardinals. Sports uh, paraphernalia yeah, I mean, is if, chief if among them. The Chicago Cubs, we all know it's a terrorist group, but <laughs> the Cardinals are a hate group. They have uh, they have allegiances with Azov Battalion and other Yeah, and that's forces. also that's if you want to find the right wing equivalent to, to Pizzagate and their like secret s- symbols, it's all Cardinals. Symbols. Cardinals gear, yeah. yeah. Like look for Roy Moore to show up at his press conference wearing a Cardinals hat. But what I what I loved saying. about the uh, this last scene in the movie where it's like it's a big picnic party to celebrate the Constitution, and there's a big banner over Madison Rises that says "We the People Support Our Constitution." Again, like in the world of this movie, like so many people are just like of a day or just like boo constitution. We hate yeah, it. Ob- Obama, <laughs> Obama was sitting on city limits in a tank, and he's like, uh, "We're about to uh, put everyone in FEMA camps." And then he sees the concert, and he's like, "What does that billboard say?" Oh no, we can't invade. He foiled. Yeah. Well, what I, what I, what I liked about the rock. what I like yeah. about the concert scene is it's like the perfect. Uh, summation of like the worldview of the, the the kind of Tea Party activist mindset, or like the people who who wrote and produced this movie, because they think that like again, if everyone just read the Constitution, they would believe like them, and like all you need to get kids on your side, your kids who may be straying from the path, who maybe don't talk to you anymore because of all the things you said on Facebook, <laughs> all you need to win them back is just have like like a butt rock concert with your family. And it just it just says we love the Constitution. They'll be like, you know what, Dad? Mark Levin was right. Thank you for buying me all those Bill O'Reilly books. I'm going to read them now. The Constitution well, well, what's, is swell. <laughs> it's amazing. It's I think this movie there's a lot of psychology in it. In that, <laughs> uh, in that, so the one of the first things Ben Franklin says is like the country is falling apart. And it's funny because all the scenes we see of his life is like Id- idyllic. Yeah, he, right. he never works. He lives in like a 20 bedroom man- McMansion. Uh, everything he does all day is just go to the coffee shop and be like, oh, what's in the newspaper? <laughs> I wonder if Dudesbury's real. Her, his, <laughs> and, his wife is an incredibly well remunerated local reporter. Yeah. The kids, like, he has a good relationship with his kids, but then, like, this fucking weird man takes him to a haunted house, an abstraction, where he sees distortions to make it seem like the Democrats are coming to kill him and that they're going to make his kids slaves with the national debt. (laughs) Uh, And so it becomes real. Like, the horror becomes real, but the solution to the horror is is to do pretty much exactly the same thing. It's to live a suburban life, but to have a big picnic. <laughs> yep. right, right. It really is Tea Party mindset. Like, it is this is amazing. the perfect summation of it. It's it's it is how it's so. 
demobilizing. The entire thing is it never has a call to like, action. The actual like everything. That's per- how you end up doing skeet shooting with Keurigs because you have no direction. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah you think that is like you th- you're like all right, time for direct action, yeah. and no. it's like taking a video of me yeah. destroying. No, a the call item. to action I'm lay is in a, a tap dance routine and take a with Judy of Garland. <laughs> I'm going to wear a diaper to own the libs. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, like you said, everything in this guy's day-to-day life seems completely frictionless yep. and conflict, like free from all material wants. He, or he's exactly or what you would imagine Paul Dean's dumb son. To be like. <laughs> yeah. He just sort of wanders around in a dopey haze. Yeah. His needs taken care of forever. <laughs> he like goes into the police station and he's like, hey guys, what happened to Sharper Image? <laughs> <laughs> Every day is like for him. Look at your guns. He, yeah. he calls the police to report blockbuster video missing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> While you're at it, I think they might have taken Hollywood video with them too. But a card that allows him to say the N word given to him by <laughs> yeah. he uh, has Cedric the Entertainer. But yeah, he has the best life. But like again, and he, that's exactly the type of person that would be intensely disturbed if some some vague authority figure, someone even just dressed, someone who just walked out of their job at Colonial Williamsburg, <laughs> took them aside and said, do you know that the national debt is $800 trillion? Yeah. They'd yeah. be like, what? what? That's a lot of money. And they're like, did you know that your children will be paying it off? And, and in this movie, they literally show like the, the national debt scare and a baby like going, wow, with the guy <laughs> collapsing like fucking yeah. safe on her back. Yeah, so... And and like you figure that every guy who's like our here the hero of this movie voted for Trump, which is awesome because they're doing it. They want to do a trillion dollar tax cut, and like who's the attorney general? Jeff Sessions, Mister Federal Asset Forfeiture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the guy who says yes, the government should just be able to take your shit without any fucking proof of wrongdoing. Very yeah. Fourth Amendment compliant. But yeah, no, that's it's because you can tell that guy anything and he'll be like, oh, those are my beliefs now. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, arguably like Black Lives Matter protests in a couple of years ago were in that, you know, in the spirit of that little circle of protest. They were not it was not an unlawful protest. Yeah. Um, It it, you know, it gets to the slipperiness of the words, you know, of uh, because when a bunch of uh, literal jackbooted thugs were kind of surrounding them. Um, provoking it all, suddenly everyone was taking their word that it was a a protest that was a, like a powder keg and windows were being smashed. And because that's yeah, what really terrifies is, the, yeah. the golden yeah. mongos of the world is that they're perfect, like I said, completely conflict-free and frictionless life. Yeah, might, their nightmare, disturbed. their, their <laughs> cold sweat nightmare for the Antifa uprising was they're going to block traffic. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to be yeah, able yeah. to get to Arby's before they switch out the breakfast burritos. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy's the like tugging Taco on Bell. a police officer's uh, pants leg and being like, can you tell me what it was at Regis on TV today? And the guy's like, not now. We have to beat protesters. And he's like, have- this is inconveniencing me. <laughs> You're right, though, about how that beating- frictionless... This makes them totally susceptible because you could make the same movie with the same guy and just have him be visited by the ghost of Saeed Khatoub, <laughs> and he would end up joining ISIS. Yeah. yeah, he would like be in Damascus beheading people. It would, it would. He wouldn't join. He would just be an ISIS poster, though. He would be like yeah. one of those guys named like the Lion. <laughs> Sa- Saeed Khatoub would take him through a time tunnel to that like. College dance yes, he went to in 1950s. Look, he's upon the profanities of <laughs> yeah. Western culture. So you're t- you're telling Look me, at Biff Tannen. Where is he putting his hands? <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me Sharia isn't rules? It's a god to make your life better. <laughs> as long as you follow these very strict, simple rules and don't deviate from them at all. Yeah, we have a just and ordered society. You're saying I don't need an imam for my relationship with Allah? <laughs> <laughs> that I can decide who the kafirs are? <laughs> it's very, How many it's a versions? very adaptable format. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many versions? <laughs> That's a lot of damn versions. 